Hi, I'm Jeff, and welcome to another one of my videos where I take a look at all the new comic books coming out on either October 4th or 5th, 2022, and I ask myself the question, what one new comic book would I buy this week if I could buy just one book? Or not. Actually, I'm not going to do that this week. I do not have a pick this week. Instead, I'm going to give you a list of just number one books, and there's a lot of them. So let's go ahead and stop talking about it and get right into the content. First, by taking a look back at my pick from two weeks ago, which was Vanish, issue number one. And the question remains, was it a worthy and worthwhile pick to be my just one book pick of the week? And the answer is yes. Yes, I enjoyed it. I found it entertaining. I expected uh, Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman to uh, present me with something that I would be entertained by, and I was entertained. Did I think it was the best comic book ever? No. Do I think it's going to change the world of comic books forever? No. Uh, do I think it's going to be a massive critical and commercial success? I don't think so. But I enjoyed it, and so I am going to keep checking it out. Uh, I'll probably give it at least until issue number five, and then see. Uh, I'm not hugely optimistic that I'll be reading this book for years to come, but I'm definitely interested in it for now, so I will keep reading it. If you read Vanish, let me know down in the comments what you thought of it. All right, let's go ahead and move forward and take a look at the books that are coming out this week. First, I'm going to tell you about the two books that I am buying this week. I'm only buying two books, and they are the next two books I am going to talk about. Neither of them are number ones. The first book I'm buying this week is Batman issue 128. Uh, I love Batman. I love Chip Zdarsky. I think he hit the ground running with this Batman title. He's doing a great job so far, and I'm super engaged and super excited about his work on Batman. So I'm absolutely picking that up and reading that this week. I'm also going to be getting um, Hulk, issue number nine from Marvel Comics. This is another Donny Cates joint, so to speak. Um, I've been enjoying Hulk, uh, but... And, and, I, and I'm really interested in this new arc, this Hulk planet arc, but this will be m potentially my last hurrah with Hulk. If I find that this Hulk planet arc is really, really awesome, I'll stick with it. If not, I'm probably going to drop it. So uh, this is last chance for me with Hulk. All right, so those are the two books that I am buying this week. I also might buy these next three books. There are three facsimiles that are coming out this week. There's a facsimile for uh, The Tomb of Dracula, issue number one. Uh, there's a facsimile for The Amazing Spider-Man, issue number one. And a facsimile for Superman, issue number one. Pretty sure I'm going to get the Superman one and the Spider-Man one, maybe on the Tomb of Dracula one, but these facsimiles are great opportunities to hold in your hand comic books that you'll probably never actually get to hold in your hand, at least the original first print versions. So this will give you the opportunity to read them, and sometimes they increase in value on the secondary market, so might be something worth picking up and checking out this week. All right, so let's move into the many books that I want to talk about this week. Um, that are the number one books that are coming out this week. Some of the descriptions I'm going to read, and, and many of them I am not going to read. The first book I want to mention to you is The Joker, The Man Who Stopped Laughing, issue number one from DC. I'm not going to read the description. It's basically all you need to know. It's kind of sort of a continuation of the previous Joker series that was written by James Tynion IV, but now it's being written by Matthew Rosenberg. Uh, if you like Joker and you want a Joker-centric story, uh, you might consider picking up the Joker, The Man Who Stopped Laughing. The next book I'm going to mention today is a new book. It is called uh, The Shepherd, the Pit, issue number one from Black Caravan. Here's the description. Lexi and Nico Miller, the surviving children of The Shepherd, are visited by a spectral dog whose face is horribly disfigured. The siblings are shocked to learn that this phantom is the victim of a local dog fighting ring. Yet, despite his own brutal death, the mournful dog's spirit is determined that his fellow animals be freed from the violence and brutality of The Pit that claimed his life. What follows is a desperate rescue attempt that pierces the very heart of darkness. 
All right, so those of you who have watched my videos before, you've seen cameos by my dog, Daisy. I also have a second dog, Leo, and I love my dogs so much. The fact that dog fighting pits exist is just disgusting. Um, and this is a story that kind of sort of tackles that. So it, it would be difficult for me to read um, because I don't want to, the, just the idea of it is very horrible to me. But at the same time, maybe it's a good story that will show these horrible people getting their comeuppance. So because I love dogs and because it actually sounds like it could be a cool story, I mention it to you this week. The next book I want to mention to you is a new book. They're all new books this week. Uh, it is Gotham City Year One. It's number issue number one of a six-issue limited series. Basically, all I'm going to say is that it's written by Tom King, so that's good, uh, with art by uh, Phil Hester, that's good, uh, and it is a Batman Year One story. And these Year One stories, I, I remember reading a Robin Year One and a Batman Year One. Um, they can be really cool stories. So um, if you like Batman and you like Year One stories, this might be something that you check out this week. The next book I want to mention to you is called West Moon Chronicles, issue number one from Scout Comics. Here's the description. The elusive creatures of mud and blood, known as the Dokebi, live just off of Route 4 in East Texas, in the ancient pine forest known as the Tangle Chase. Jun Ho, a Korean immigrant with a shadowy past, and his estranged grandson, Jae Sun, are the only people in the nearby town of Vane who know the true nature of the Dokebi. Together, they must figure out what's causing the creatures to turn hostile. Perhaps it has something to do with the interdimensional portal at the heart of the Tangle Chase. For it is from here that the past comes knocking, demanding a reckoning from both men. Okay, that description sounds interesting. It sounds like it could be a cool story worth checking out. If it sounds interesting to you, it's new this week. The next book I want to mention to you is Black Caravan Premier. John Clark's Something Juicy, issue number one from Black Caravan. Here's the description. The most popular girl in school digs for juicy dirt on the girl who stole her boyfriend, but a frightening truth finds her instead. From the creator of Black Friday and Playthings comes this dark look at high school drama. Okay, basically all you need to know here is that if you are interested in a dark look at high school drama, this might be a book worth checking out this week. The next book I want to mention to you is Sweetie Candy Vigilante from Dynamite. I hardly ever mention Dynamite books, but here's one for you this week. I'm going to read a little bit of the description for you. It's sugar, ice, and you better be nice. Sweetie Candy Vigilante, Vigilante is a honey-dipped Dark humor infused horror fantasy that tells the tale of Sweetie, an ethereal, beautiful, charming, well meaning, yet unquestionably unhinged, blood relative of the mythological Candyman. You know, the dude that takes the sunrise and sprinkles it with dew? Yeah, that guy. Dismayed by the blight and decay of her community, Sweetie is hellbent on enacting a blood caked, sugar coated manifesto on society by utilizing her otherworldly powers and proprietary family secrets in her quest to make the world a sweeter place. Okay, that's basically all the description I need to read. So that gives you the idea of the tone and the idea. So it sounds like a fun, violent kind of story. Uh, so if you're looking for. Um, a honey-dipped, dark humor-infused horror-slash-fantasy uh, story. This might be one for you this week. The next book I want to mention to you is Siren's Gate, issue number one, another book from Dynamite. Here's part of the description. Superstar artist Shannon Mayer makes his writing and interior art debut. Red Hot, Red Hot artist Shannon Mayer, Mayer's covers have been showcased on some of the best-selling books in, in, in the industry, and fans have asked for years when he will draw interiors. Well, wait no more, as Shannon makes his 
writing and interior art debut with this fiendish tale that explores the very nature of what we call reality, illuminated with the kind of stunning artwork that only he can deliver. It keeps going, but I'm just gonna say, if you're a fan of the art that you see here on the cover, maybe that's something you want to check out. I would pick this up, I would um, take it off the rack, I would flip through the interior, and if the art speaks to you, I would consider picking it up this week. It might be something worth checking out. The next book I wanna to mention to you is Garbage Pail Kids Origins, issue number one from Dynamite. Three Dynamite books this week. Uh, I'm not gonna read the description to you. I'll let you know that it's from Writer's Hands, uh, Rodionov and Adam F. Goldberg and Jeff Zapata. Um, I mentioned, uh, the uh, Hans and Adam F. Goldberg, uh, a few weeks ago, they're writing Damage Control. Um, I also work with them recently, full disclosure, so I know these guys. I know Hans, I really don't know Adam. Um, but um, he's a nice guy, and he's writing comic books. And Garbage Pail Kids, when I was a kid, man, I was way into Garbage Pail Kids. I had a pretty sweet Garbage Pail Kids collection which apparently my parents threw out at some point because it has gone completely missing and I know I didn't throw it out. So thanks mom and dad for that. Um, no, I'm, I'm very bitter about it, but I really love the Garbage Pail Kids. If you want Garbage Pail Kids stories, um, here you go. <laughs> it might be fun and entertaining stuff to read. The next book I want to mention to you is Spider-Man, issue number one from Marvel Comics. All I'm going to say is that they've rebooted Spider-Man back to a number one. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, I thought they just did that. Um, but here you go. Here's another Spider-Man, and it's an issue number one. So if you like Spider-Man, you're probably going to pick it up. And if you uh, aren't regularly committing, uh, regularly uh, collecting Spider-Man like I'm not currently, you're probably not going to be interested in this. But it's got cool covers, and uh, it's Spider-Man, so it's definitely, the very least, noteworthy. The next book I'm going to mention is a bit of an exception to my rule in this video. Uh, it's not a number one, it's a number zero. It's Miracle Man, issue zero from Marvel Comics. Here's the description. Forty years ago, Miracle Man's modern era began and changed the world of comics as we know it. Now on the cusp of a new era of Miracle Man, we celebrate all things Kamota with a who's who of the best talent in the industry. Plus, Neil Gaiman and Mark Buckingham set up this issue and their return to Miracle Man, the Silver Age. All right, so it says it's written by Neil Gaiman and various art by Mark Buckingham and various. Uh, what this leads me to believe is something that happens often with these issue zeros is they're kind of like origin stories or backstories or kind of like previously on type of stories. So I have a feeling there may be uh, previous, uh, previously released Miracle Man content in this, but it's basically a primer for the Miracle Man series that is coming. So if you're interested in Miracle Man but know very little about Miracle Man, uh, you probably want to pick up issue number zero so you can get caught up on the important aspects of Miracle Man that would be good to know going into his ongoing series that will be coming soon. The next book I want to mention to you Oh, I totally lied. I threw in one book that's not, another book that's not a number one in here, but this is a book you need to know about. It's Edge of Spider-Verse, issue number five of five from Marvel Comics. Uh, I'm not going to read the description, but I will say it is the final issue of this Edge of Spider-Verse Spider -verse series, which I guess I haven't really hearing people going crazy about it, but um, people I think it's okay. There have been first appearances in it, and that's why you should consider picking up issue number five. There are first appearances in it that uh, apparently are are coming from uh, writers Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. Those two are the people who are writing the Edge of Spider-Verse movies, the animated movies, the first one that came out and the second one that will be coming out. The fact that they've created these two characters leads me to believe that it's very possible that we'll see them in Edge of Spider-Verse 2. So if you're looking for something to pick up purely on spec this week, I mean, even if you haven't picked up issues one through four of Edge of Spider-Verse, you might consider picking up issue number five, because while there was spec potential in the first four issues, uh, the Spider-Sense is tingling 
uh, with this issue number five and its potential spec value. The next book I want to mention to you is Earth Dividers, issue number one. This is from IDW uh, Publishing. Uh, it's book one is Kill Columbus. Uh, I'm going to read the description really quickly. Stephen Graham Jones makes his ongoing comics debut with Earth Dividers. The year is 2112, and it's the apocalypse exactly as expected. Rivers receding, oceans rising, civilization crumbling. Humanity has given up hope except for a group of outcast indigenous survivors who have discovered a time travel portal in a cave in the middle of the desert and figured out where the world took a sharp, a sharp turn for the worst. America. <sighs> Convinced that the only way to save the world is to rewrite the past, they send one of their own on a bloody one-way mission back to 1492 to kill Christopher Columbus before he reaches the so-called New World. By taking down an icon, but but taking down an icon is no easy task, and his actions could prove devastating for his friends in the future. Sounds like a bad plan to me, but this is their idea. They think that the only way to not to stop their end of the world is to stop Christopher Columbus from discovering America. Um, like I said, sounds like a bad plan, but could be an interesting story. So if it sounds like a cool thing to read about to you, uh, you might consider picking up Earth Dividers, issue number one this week. The next one I want to mention to you is uh, Night of the Ghoul, issue number one of a three-issue limited series from Dark Horse Comics. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to read the description. All you need to know is it's creepy, just in time for Halloween, coming up in just a few weeks. And it's from Scott Snyder, who is not to be ignored. So um, definitely consider, if you're looking for something ghoulish uh, and Halloween-themed, I will steer you, steer you hardcore to Night of the Ghoul. I like Scott Snyder, and I have a, a lot of, um, I have high hopes for the potential of this story. The next book I want to mention to you is Revolvers, issue number one of a four-issue limited series from Image Comics. Uh, here's the description. Captain Wales, a Detroit homicide detective, finds himself trapped in a mysterious and violent reality, only to find himself dead while attempting to solve a seemingly average and routine homicide. Confronted by an immortal tormentor known as La Python, the Python, Hampton begins a dark and twisted quest to find out why and how he died. To do so, he must face off against a legion of gun-toting deceased revolvers within the moratorium, a hellish version of purgatory. Hampton will need to kill or be killed to have enough time to unravel his demise and uncover it was by his own hand, someone else, or something more sinister. Uh, this is written by John Zur Platten and uh, art by Christian Debari. I don't know any of these people. The story sounds a little bit cliche, um, but it could be something interesting and I'm mentioning it. The next book I want to mention to you is Kaya, issue number one from Image Comics. Uh, it's with write, written and art by Wes Craig. Um, it says a jam-packed series premiere with 31 gorgeous story pages plus bonus material and a Jack Kirby-inspired variant cover by Deadly Cra Class co-creator Wes Craig. Uh, after the destru destruction of their village, a young girl with a magic arm and a fighting spirit is tasked with delivering her little brother to a faraway safe haven. There, he's destined to discover the secret to overthrowing the all-powerful empire that destroyed their home. Okay, so this is an astonishing new ongoing fantasy adventure series about siblings surviving in a world of monsters and mutants. If you were looking at trying something new this week, I might recommend Kaya. Uh, I don't know. It's for some reason, I think feel like there's some there there. So um, maybe consider picking that one up this week. Uh, it looks like I have three more. We're in the home stretch, folks. Uh, the next one I want to mention is Junkyard Joe, issue number one from Image Comics. Uh, this is from writer Jeff Johns and artist Gary Frank. I'm not going to read the description. I'm going to tell you that he's a robot soldier. Um, and that his first appearance was in Geiger, also written by Jeff Johns. 
Uh, Jeff Johns is trying to create a bit of a universe and Junkyard Joe is part of what's expanding that universe. If you like robot soldiers, if you like robots or if you like soldiers or if you like robot soldiers, um, this might be something worth checking out this week. Uh, next, we have a book called Dark Ride, issue number one uh, from Image Comics. Here's the description. Welcome to the scariest place on Earth. Devil Land has been the world's premier horror-themed amusement park for over 50 years, home to the scariest ride ever created, The Devil's Do. But when lifelong fan Owen Seasons begins his first day on the job, he will discover the true horrors happening behind the scenes, the truth about the park's reclusive creator, Arthur Dante, and that the job of his dreams might just be a living nightmare. Joshua Williamson and Andre Brisson reunite for a thrilling plunge into murder, mayhem, and sinister family secrets in this all-new Skybound original series. Okay, this is another book this week that if you are looking to try something new, you might consider this, especially if you're looking something for looking for something spooky um, for Halloween. Where I think Night of the Ghoul of the Ghoul from Scott Snyder is going to be just like strictly speaking, just straight horror uh, comic book reading. I think this might be a little bit more in the fun horror comic book reading. So if you're looking for a little bit more fun. Uh, in your horror this week. Uh, this sounds like it could be a fun and entertaining and quality story. And finally, the last book I'm going to mention this week is Three Keys, issue number one of a five-issue limited series. Here's the description. Han Solo artist David Messina invites you to explore the mysterious world of Three Keys. Did the, did the inhabitants of another dimension flee into our reality to save themselves from the terrible wrath of the great old ones or to help prepare us for a final devastating invasion? And what if humanity's only chance against these great old ones is an impetuous, mischievous young woman and her sardonic, furry, and surprisingly violent mentor? All questions are asked and answered in this five-part introduction to writer and artist David Messina's epic apocalyptic universe featuring 27 full story pages. Okay, as with most of the books this week, if that description sounds interesting to you, maybe you'll consider checking it out. If it didn't sound interesting to you, there's plenty of other books worth trying this week, uh, so I'm sure one of them will tickle your fancy. Uh, in fact, uh, that's all the books we're going to talk about this week. Let me know down in the comments if any of these books sound interesting to you. Whether or not you're buying them, uh, that's that's kind of neither here nor there. Here nor there. But let me know down in the comments if you are buying them. But let me know if the, if anything in particular from the list that I presented to you this week is interesting to you. I'd like to know down in the comments. As always, if you like this video, likes are appreciated by me. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, I invite you to do so. Sorry about the lateness of this video this week. I'm lucky that I even got it out, so I hope that it had some interesting information in it and value to you. Thank you, as always, for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.